Unlock the power of pitching without killing your arm. I'm Aaron Robinette, head coach of Athletic Power and Performance. I help aspiring athletes remove the roadblocks in their way so that they can unleash their athlete within. Athletic Power and Performance. Don't be a piece, train holistically. Unlocking the young pitcher's power by developing their core will do two things. First, they'll be able to transition more of their power from their lower body into their pitch. The second is by transitioning this power, they will reduce the stress on their arm and specifically their elbow and shoulder. This is one of the videos in my series on arm health for the baseball pitcher. In this video, I will discuss how developing the core musculature for the aspiring pitcher will increase their ability to pitch with more power and velocity while reducing the stress and emphasis on their arm that often leads to arm issues. Next, I'll discuss how to properly train the core musculature to help the pitcher transition exercises from the gym into the ability to pitch with more power. Finally, I will cover a few key exercises to help the pitcher increase pitching power and velocity while reducing arm stress and fatigue. Point number one, how the core musculature increases pitching power and velocity. All movement in athletics needs stability to increase speed, power, and velocity. For the pitcher, the core musculature needs to provide stability as well as rotational ability for the pitcher to effectively pitch with speed, power, and velocity. The core muscles must be able to provide stability to transition power from the lower body into velocity in the upper body and the arm. If the core muscles are weak, there is power loss between the lower body into the pitch. There is also an increased stress in the arm to make up for this lost power. Point number two, properly training the core. To develop the core properly to help the pitcher, the exercises must cause the core to create stability for the body. Most core exercises people use have the stabilization provided for the exercise. This means that there is no stabilization being developed in those exercises. The core exercises must also maintain or even improve the pitcher's postural alignment. Many exercises, like the floor crunch, pull the body out of postural alignment and do not train the core to develop any stabilization. Finally, the core exercises must improve the pitcher's ability to pitch to improve the stability which transitions power from the lower body into the pitch, must protect the body from forces from the pitch, or a combination of two or all three of these areas. Point number three, I'll cover exercises that help the pitcher develop the core for improvement in the pitch, develop the stability needed to increase power transition from the lower body into the pitch, and to protect the body from the forces from pitching a baseball. I will be discussing a few of these exercises that will help these three areas in varying degrees. Swiss ball sit-ups with a medicine ball throw. This exercise develops power for the core and a movement that mimics a portion of the pitching motion. You want to be in a, a crunch position and throwing off the ball you want, want to make sure to throw it high so you can catch it high. Rope ball power slams standing. This exercise develops tremendous twisting power for the core, which is necessary for the pitcher to increase his velocity. To perform this exercise, you want to have a nice athletic stance, your back against the wall. You're going to take the rope ball, you're going to slam it against one side, creating momentum to slam it against the other side. And you want to make sure you keep that momentum up and fire against the wall back and forth. Core stance vertical. This exercise helps improve the pitcher's postural alignment 
by adding some stability work while the pitcher must keep a neutral alignment with his spine. This improves the pitcher's awareness of his body position, which improves his body position during the pitching motion. When performing the horse dance, place the stick on your back along the spine with the stick resting on your head, at your upper back between your shoulder blades, and on your tailbone. You want to be on your hands and knees during this exercise. Bring one hand up slightly, just breaking contact with the ground, while raising your opposite knee slightly, again, just breaking contact with the ground. Hold for five seconds, and then switch hands and knees. The stick should remain in this position the entire exercise. If the stick is rolling off to the side or moving around, you need to focus on keeping your spine in neutral alignment and keeping all three points in contact with the stick the entire duration of the exercise. Lower abdominal series. This muscle needs to be strong to stabilize the pelvis. When the pelvis is stabilized, the pitcher is able to generate much more force from the lower body into each pitch he throws. Lay face up with your knees bent and place your hand underneath your low back roughly at the same position as your belly button. Put slight but steady pressure on your hand with your low back and pull your belly button in towards your spine. Raise one leg up and lower it back down for eight to 12 reps or until you cannot keep pressure on your hand, whichever comes sooner. Repeat this on the other side. You should be able to perform at least 10 reps for three sets on each side while keeping constant pressure on your hand with your low back before advancing this exercise to a more difficult level. To advance this exercise, straighten your leg out a little, but keep your knee flexed in this position and repeat the same process. When you're able to perform this exercise with a fairly straight legs, bend your knees back to the original starting position and perform this exercise with both legs at the same time. Keep in mind, this can be a big jump with doing both legs from the single leg, so proceed with care. Oblique twist with a weight shift. This is a dynamic exercise that mimics a portion of the pitching motion. This starts with a lower body and transitions this motion into the core with a twisting motion. When performing the oblique twist with a weight shift, you want to make sure you have a nice, good light stance, and you want to make sure your body is able to shift, so side to side this way, and then from there you want to get a nice rotation in there. Prone Cobra. This exercise helps improve the pitcher's postural alignment, which balances against the forces the pitching motion can take on the pitcher. Performing the Prone Cobra on the ball, you want to make sure you have some sort of solid object. I always like that because it helps. I don't have to really work that hard to keep my feet from sliding out. The higher on the ball, on your body the ball is, the easier it is, the lower on your body the ball is the more difficult it is. I always like to get right about the hips, feet right here, same concept as on the ground. So right like this, you want to make sure your head's in neutral posture, you're going to keep your chin looking down towards the ground and turn your thumbs up towards the ceiling, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Go however the hold is that you want to do, but make sure you're performing that two minute work phase. In this video, I'm just scratching the surface of how to overcome roadblocks in the athlete's way. For a deeper dive into Unleashing the Athlete Within, get a copy of my book, Athlete Unleashed. Also check out my online program and individual coaching options at athleticpowerandperformance.com. That link is in the description below.